let's see. So can can all of you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start. So um, I, I, I know some of you. I, I'm Howard Schneider from Toronto, Canada. I will be talking today, um, as the screen says, an analogical inductive solution to the grounding problem. Um, what is a simple grounding problem? Harnett gives a nice definition, but let me jump to an example right away. Um, you, you know, you have no knowledge of Chinese. You want to learn Chinese language. Um, you want to translate this. You're given a Chinese to Chinese dictionary. The problem is if you try and um, translate this, you're going to go from one string of symbols without any meaning attached to the symbols to another string of symbols. Um, I'm going to talk now about a solution to the grounding problem via the causal cognitive architecture. Uh, what is this architecture? I've presented at other BICA conferences. I'm currently in my latest submission, um, CCA5 uh, version. Um, the paper submitted to the conference was written about six months ago, but it's uh, same ideas as um, what's in the latest paper. Um, the, the architecture is based on navigation maps, which I did talk about two days ago, the biological inspiration. This is before the GPS, the auto association would give you um, these little maps you want to go say from Vancouver in Canada to some other town here it takes you to the mountains and you flip it over and there's another map each one of these is a navigation map same thing in my architecture navigation maps are arrays here in Python I'm using NumPy library um, I'm not going to talk much about biological origins I did the other day but um, basically it's inspired um, let me just move I have all the speaker thing here it's inspired by the um, you know, the fact that in the hippocampus does both navigation and memory management. Um, it's, it's, we've known the structure of the brain since the 1950s. The repeating units are called cortical columns. Um, there's about 300 mini columns in our brains. And I'm, more or less, I'm just assuming that um, in evolution, my postulation was that there was gene duplication as often happens. And the circuits forming the cortex in mammals are similar to the hippocampal circuits. In other words, each one of those 300 million um, cortical columns is a navigation map. Um, so don't think of it a big associative array. Think of it 300 million little maps there. So they have connections properties within the map and they and also between some of them and also they have symbolic properties. This is the architecture is controlling a robot here. I'm gonna call it just CCA cognitive causal architecture five or CCA five robot. Just means the same thing, the, the architecture plus the embodiment. It wants to cross this river. This is what it sees. It's going to create this navigation map. Again, a navigation map is an array. It can contain features. Water is a feature. It can contain links to other cells and other maps or within the same map. It can contain procedures. It doesn't show it here, but any cell, all the all these things can be mixed together and could be multiple of them in any cell. Um, every module in the architecture uses navigation maps. A cognitive cycle, sensory inputs come in. There's processing and motor outputs out. Okay. The, op the operations on the maps, as I talked about two days ago, um, different than if I was working with symbolic logic, if I was using Prolog, which I do have an old copy of, or if I was trying to program an expert system, you know, I'd be using if-then statements. As I mentioned the other day, if I was working neural networks, you know, using PyTorch, TensorFlow, different. This, the, this is really a different type of AI. It's um, the, the operations I do, I can copy navigation maps, compare them, add them, subtract them, add vectors to them, match them. Okay, let's see an example of the architecture, but without the inductive feedback mechanism. Okay, the robot's out and about, it wants to cross the river. It does operations on the navigation maps. Um, sensor information goes into local navigation maps. These are matched to higher order maps. These maps are matched to the maps in the causal memory module. Best map is chosen. There's spatial binding. Um, then I deal with temporal binding as I presented last year. Um, the result is sensory information comes into the architecture. You get down here to the navigation module. You get a working navigation map, which I just showed you. Also, the information splits off here. This blue line represents the temporal binding in the sequential error correcting module, which, of course, you know, I'm assuming is the cerebellum. But um, um, you really, as I showed the other year, you really need to do um, temporal error correcting, which the philosophers don't think about. You, it's the, the binding problem is not just spatial; it's also temporal. Um, also, I'm, I'm feeding data here to the primitives. The primitives are procedures or rules, productions. Primitives are triggered. This triggers it. A working primitive is formed. The working primitive is also a navigation map. Its operations are simple. They're array linear algebra operations. 
Um, there's also triggers in the goal of motion module, um, which will affect the working primitive chosen. The goal is to cross the river. Um, equation 78 in the paper, this, um, the equations are linear algebra with pseudocode. Um, the working primitive is applied against the working navigation map. Um, this, is, this is it, it's seeing it here, they've seen it creates, this is the database that, it, it, that I showed you. What it's got to do, the first, it's going to call a pathfinding primitive. The pathfinding primitive has to find a path across the river. It can't work with this, it needs to know either, is it air, is it water, or is it a solid? The primitives can work with that. So this, these have to be transformed to that. The problem is solid 08, which is a leaf. The system, the, at this level, I don't have language in my system. Um, language really won't matter for the grounding problem, even though I know it's usually thought, talked about in terms of language. Um, it, it knows solid 08. How does it know that the leaf is solid 08? Because in the initial database, 10,000 items were fed in. It can recognize 10,000 objects, but it knows nothing about it. It doesn't matter if I tell it's leaf, it would be useless for the architecture. It knows solid 08. It knows what it can visually recognize it. I know it's thin sheets and understands thin, understands sheets. That's it there. So it, it never had experience with this. Problem is, is that it's in the solid category. So it's gonna consider it solid. So here's solid grass, trees, this is solid. And the, the, the pathfinding primitive finds a path across the river. And, but the problem is it steps onto the leaves and its leg goes into the water and gets wet and it falls in the river and gets damaged. Okay, it tries again to cross the river. Now it, it's grounded. It has grounding in, in it has grounding in stepping into the water, into on the leaf. It knows it steps on the leaf, it gets wet. It won't go there. It's had this negative experience. Uh, so now it's not, it'll make a better decision. Grounding's important. Um, these are the equations in my paper, which um, define grounding, a grounded feature. It can be any feature such that it's, it's in the local navigation maps, which is the first maps created. And the feature is also in the sensory inputs, which is in the previous case when we, the, the, the information about 1008 leaves were fed in electronically. It didn't have any experience with it. It's as if a student's memorizing something for a test and has no grounding in it. Um, okay, we're gonna do a new example. We're okay with time. Now the robot wants to, um, a new robot, it has no memory of the river. Brand new robot from the robot factory. And let's try again. This time we're gonna use this part of the equation. What it says is a feature can become grounded by the analogical inductive mechanism. What's the analogical inductive mechanism? Um, here, let's go through it. It's gonna make the maps as before. It's gonna match them, it's temporal binding. It's gonna, here we have the working navigation map. Here we have the, you know, it's temporally bounded here. Primitive is, is triggered, same as before. It's gonna activate this. And it's gonna to get to the same place where it's got to um, figure out what is, what is link 008. It doesn't have any information. There's very poor grounding there. So, but this time, it's going to, it, because what's going to happen is, as I showed about three, four years ago at a bike conference, the reason I found this architecture very interesting is because if I feedback partial results, I get causal behavior out of the architecture. And the interesting thing is I get psychotic behavior also. Then I look at the world around me and um, primates really do not have causal behavior. They don't have psychosis either. It's really rare, but it's common in humans and we have full causal behavior. I said, wow, this is this interesting model. It, it's uh, maybe these navigation maps, um, you know, it, interesting way to go, which I was very excited about. What I've done now is the feedback mechanism has been slightly altered. These are the equations. And again, it's linear algebra with pseudocode. Um, I'm not going to go through, let me go through, let me, I'm going to go through them more visually to show you what happens. And again, it's very biologically oriented. It's not in the 1950s, people said, Oh, we know we have these big computers, von Neumann machines, and we're gonna we're, people are trying to figure out how the brain could be a von Neumann computer. And you know, that was a bad idea, it really didn't work out. And then in you know, in the 2000s, people are saying, Oh, neural networks, brain, brain's like a neural network. There must be back propagation. I know people are still working on it. How does the brain do back propagation? Again, it'll be proved to be a bad idea. This is much more biologically um, feasible. The work the the navigation map in the working navigation is, is fed back to input sensory vectors, which I presented about three years ago. This is the feedback. You don't have to, no big changes, just some more axons get attached there. And there's lots of feedback in the brain. And the reason there's feedback also in this causal cognitive architecture is because the, the upstream, the, the, the upstream um, system will, in, will influence the downstream results. Basically the feedback will, will, it will influence what it's um, recognizing. But also now what I do is I feed, I also send information to the causal memory module, the copy of, the, of this. 
what it does, it matches to the best map in the causal memory match. And then it looks at what was the next map it used. And then it looks at the next map. It puts it in this new structure, temporary memory map, and just a short-term memory register, which is a big deal for a biological architecture. If you're doing a normal computer, you say, oh, give me a billion memory registers. Can't do that here. It's a big deal. Um, and here, and then I put a negative copy of this in the navigation, back in navigation module. So now what's in the navigation module, the working navigation memory represents the difference between the best match of what it did. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just copy in the next cognitive cycle, which is half, which I presented three, four years ago in the normal feedback, this map just gets returned back to the navigation module. And now the result, the the, this, this map, this navigation map represents um, the difference between the best match, like difference would happen in an analogy situation, plus the old map. L let me, basically, it looks like, I'm going to show a little graphical example to make it clear. Um, unless you've been writing notes with a pen and paper, it's, I know it's hard to follow. Um, induction by analogy has occurred mathematically. I have object, I don't know, these are blocking on my screen. I don't know if you can see it here. I'm just pushing it down here. Okay, on the bottom. This is object Y. Um, let me just clean up the my picture. Okay, object Y, we have two objects. Object X has properties A1, A2, A3 to AN. Object, object Y has properties A1, A2, A3 to AN. Okay, we see, hey, property Y also has, uh, sorry, object Y also has property B. Therefore, by induction by analogy, um, object X is also gonna have B. This is what's happened. This is an example from Francois Cholet. He's done abstraction re reasoning corpus, basically a book of IQ tests for machines. Um, you know, say there, you see a navigation map like this. There's a line here, line here. I don't know what it means. You feed it into the machine. It won't know what to do either. It'll match it to the best matching map, which is this. Um, then what happens in the next cycle? The, in the past, what the best matching map, what was the next navigation map this pointed to? It pointed to this. See, this is the difference, the difference. Therefore, we take the difference and we apply it to the original map. And effectively, this is induction by analogy. Okay, let's apply it to the example. I would need to go through two or three cognitive cycles, which isn't a big deal in, in you know, if cognitive cycles are occurring even in, in a biological creature at 100, 200 milliseconds, um, you know, in a second, all this, half a second, this is done, but it'll take me five minutes to show it. But let me just scrub with words. So basically, Solid one zero zero eight. That's the leap. Is it a solid for path for the pathfinding instinctive primitive? So link one zero zero eight. We can recognize the scene as a, as a solid. We know it's thin sheets, but we have no other grounding. Okay, the, the inductive mechanism is run, and it happens automatically, just like in a gasoline or diesel engine. You have pistons going up and down. You have valves opening. Cams are turning. Little gears are turning. This is all occurring automatically. Um, in equation ninety eight, the the difference is legs. It basically um, there's also, there's different levels of grounding. I, I know a lot of times when I read philosophical papers, there's grounding or not grounding. However, um, in the truth, there's levels of grounding. The example I gave you with the Chinese to Chinese dictionary is terrible grounding. It's, you can't do anything. However, you have a whole range of grounding. And usually this analogical mechanism will ground it to something. For example, um, you know, it, the, the, this robot has experience. It stepped on thin sheets of newspaper in a deep puddle. And what happened? Its legs got wet. Didn't get damaged, but legs got wet. Okay, the, the thin sheets of the leaves, which are thin sheets, are going to get matched, the newspaper thin sheets, and the difference is going to be legs wet. Then the, the, w, the working navigation map analogical becomes this 1008, the solid plus legs wet. This gets, fed. the next cognitive cycle happens. The instinctive primitive is applied against it. It sees solid 1008, wet, therefore it's going to consider it water, not as a solid when it's transforming the navigation map. And what happens is before it's going to say, okay, this, this were the trees, the grass, it's solid. This is the air up there. This is water where it sees the river, but it's going to consider the leaves as water. It's not solid for the pathfinding primitive. So it's going to say, no, you can't go here. There's no path. There's no path to water. And in fact, this is an actionable result. There's no more feedback An action will occur. It'll say switch directions and it won't cross the river, it'll switch into a different direction. Basically, um, I'm almost done. Um, I, I, this talk is about the grounding problem, but note that analogical inductive abilities are now a core mechanism of the architecture. A lot of times there's psychologists who specialize in this, analogies for IQ tests, see how smart somebody is. And that's how we usually think of analogies. However, um, what this suggests is that if the fact that it's by a lot of brain inspired, analogies probably, core core mechanism, how our brains work. And in fact, 
There is psychological evidence to that. Uh, and in fact, um, Douglas Hofstetter of Gottelescher Bach fame, the last 20 years he's been working on this, talking about it. Um, the, the, probably when we think for mundane things, you're picking up a toothbrush, you know, putting it at an angle, doing this, we're using analogies all the time. So, but anyways, but once we have these analogies, a solution to the grounding problem almost emerges automatically. Everything's grounded. Um, I can go into a bit more detail. There's level spectrum of grounding. But um, last um, few seconds and I'm done. Um, in a lot of papers, people talk about the grounding problem in terms of um, language. The, my architecture doesn't have language. I'm not at that point. I wasn't going to work on it. However, language has already emerged. And why does it emerge? It's because this. If I want to know why the architecture made a decision, I, I can look at the every time a decision occurs, there's a working navigation map. And that working navigation map is stored in the causal co caudal memory, uh, sorry, the the, um, the causal cognitive memory. And basically I just read back what the maps were done and I, I get an explanation, but in order to read it back, you know, I have a few verbs, a few nouns, so it's read back properly. And, you know, hey, a proto-language has already emerged and actually in equation 106, um, I, as before, th this pseudocode applied primitive nav to proto-lang, it's just reading back navigation maps. Okay, the mathematics for, um, dealing with proto-language in the system is exactly the same as dealing with everything else. The same mathematics applies, ergo grounding occurs. Um, could a full language emerge from this? I, I don't want, you know, could a full version of English or Portuguese or Chinese emerge from this? I, I would think so. And if so, the same mathematics will apply. Um, conclusion, um, an analogical inductive solution to the grounding problem has been presented. Um, important takeaway, gra simple grounding. It's not just a philosophical issue. It's an engineering issue. And dealing with simple grounding, simple grounding results in better problem-solving performance. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Howard. Uh, questions? Hi, Howard. This is yes, yes. Uh, Ricardo here. Hi, Ricardo. Uh, I, I'm following you by the by mobile and, and also here on the on the room. Oh, that's hard. That's hard. Yeah. So uh, maybe I would try to to touch you later to more. But uh, right now, uh, I'd like you to to come back to uh, something that I have pointed out in your last talk. That uh, uh, because here you, you are again uh, showing us uh, a kind of a grid map, and, and your solution in some sense appears to be related to uh, this uh, representation of the map in terms of a grid of, of uh, information that is uh, organized in a structured way. But yes. uh, in other kinds of maps, you can have just the, the uh, coordinates of, of the elements that are on the map, and you don't actually have a grid. And so I was trying to, to figure out if it's possible to use the same logic that you're using here of making uh, operations on maps on mm -hmm. these other kinds of maps, which are not grids. Uh, maps where you just have uh, the, the coordinates of all the elements that are part of the map. So do you think okay. it's possible to use the same kind of operators that you're using here, or, or uh, this uh, logic that you're pointing here is too much tied to the uh, notion of a grid map? The reason I'm using this, it's actually very biologically inspired, you know, from work on the hippocampus. In the brain, the, the neuron pathways tend to be very structurally, spatially organized. Like, the neur you, you have, like, you know, half a million neuron, like fibers coming from your eyes, and they're all there's a spatial organization to them. Um, same thing with our senses. There's a lot of spatial organization in the brain, so that's the reason I was using it. Basically, um, you know, a lot of my ideas, Ricardo, as you noticed a few years ago, I'm sort of copying the brain and making postulations that this happens, that happens, and then saying, okay, what happens when I develop it? But theoretically, you're right; it can be done other ways. Um, in the brain, though, there is spatial organization, so I've decided to keep the same spatial organization. Um, by the way, th what you're talking about, a lot of people have were thinking about this in the 2000s, um, and, and a lot of work was done on the hippocampus, resulting in a Nobel Prize um, to, to O'Keefe and Moser. Um, 
um, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, it, it, it's, you know, and, and people, because the hippocampus, it was memory, then it was spatial. And um, it, it's actually three dimensions. It's not just two dimensions. The two dimensions, we can sort of see the, the grid map. Three dimensions became complicated. Um, I forget his name. I think Jan Polsky in um, Israel, he's doing work with fruit bats because the bats fly in three dimensions. And he actually mapped out the three-dimensional mapping because the cortex is a 2D sheet. And actually it's, um, it's somehow a 3D pattern is mapped on it and he sort of deciphered how it's done. But um, I, I agree with what you're saying. It's just, I, I just said, okay, the brain's using this. Let me, let me copy the same structure. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will try to so, contact you later. I always, I always enjoy speaking with you, and, and I, I wish I could see you in person this year. It's always, a, I, I learned so much from you, Ricardo. Thank it's you. always a pleasure speaking with you. There is a second question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from Peter. Peter? Uh, is it um, based on Damasio's mind maps as well? or just No, not, uh, not really. I, I've, I know Damasio, he's done a lot of work in emotion, but also he's come up with the mind maps, and you know the, he's done a lot of work in grounding and mind maps. Um, it's not really based, it's, it's based really on the, um, in the 2000s, a lot of good work was done on the hippocampus. And basically, I'm, I'm making this postulation that, um, um, you know, what, what happened, you know, a lot of evolution occurs by gene duplication, a bunch of genes duplicate and you get structures. And, um, you know, animals like fish, fish could, could have spatial navigation, lizards do, big dinosaurs with their tiny little brains, you know, could navigate, do things. And, um, uh, you know, what, what I think happened in mammals is that circuits similar to the hippocampus got duplicated a zillion times and resulting in a cortex, basically similar circuits. And, um, you know, and again, there's no definite proof of that, but that's what I believe happened. There's some proof starting to merge. Some of the cells we see in the hippocampus were starting, may have, an, you know, similar cells in other parts of the cortex. And, and, and that was the inspiration for it. However, Damasio did touch upon some of that. I did some extra reading on Damasio um, lately, and um, I have him, he, two of his references are in the bibliography. And, um, you know, it's interesting, Peter, a lot of the philosoph, a lot of the questions, you know, like philosophers ask, like a world around us, you know, there's reasons for it. I know AI has ignored most of them, let's, like, you know, even starting with Searle, um, you know, but, you know, people were, you know, years ago, Searle, Dreyfus, um, you know, people were saying, hey, AI won't work, this won't work, because they're saying, look, look at this problem, you know, the Chinese room problem, this, and you know, there's some truth to it. And um, the Masio too, with the cognitive mind maps, the, the cognitive maps also, though, were brought up um, even before Damasio in, um, I think I was in high school, um, you know, there are people, O'Keefe, who won the, he won the Nobel Prize recently for the work on the hippocampus. Um, the idea of cognitive maps were brought up before, um, you know, it's, it's once you have data like XY data, people think of maps, but um, it, it's not directly related to Damasio's work. Although Damasio did suggest this like 20, 30 years ago, and and I, I have I have him as a reference now. I, I don't know. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Thank you, as always, and I love the point yeah. on, on different levels of uh, symbol grounding. And yeah. uh, did other people mention? Because I think I've seen it someplace. Uh, the simple grounding is an engineering problem as well, or is it your idea? Because I, I, I don't want to be unclear about that. I, I think in the last few years, as people have tried in robotics, they have more so in two areas, language and robotics. In robotics, as people, people are starting to realize the importance of um, embodied cognition, which is related to the grounding problem. And in language, people have realized there's somebody, uh, Stephanie Telex, T-L-L-E-X, she's been writing about that a lot. I think she was at MIT, then Raytheon. I forget where, um, she, she, a lot of papers by her on that. Um, it's, it's an issue in, 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 in robot, like the, um, and they're starting to realize that it is a grounding problem. I think that when Searle's idea came out, you know, nobody really considered it as a serious engineering problem. You know, here's a philosopher just talking about it, right? But, you know, as other people have started realizing, you know, if you really want to make machines that are going to work, these, 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 these constraints actually need to, be, need to be solved. Same thing with the binding problem, you know, which I hit. Um, and the grounding problem, um, there have been some people talking about different levels of grounding. I think that needs to be done better, realizing that it, things are not just grounded or not grounded. Like, you know, in the Chinese room problem, like the Chinese Chinese dictionary, the grounding is zero. But, you know, I don't think things are either no grounding or grounding. I think there is a spectrum of it. And it's interesting to explore it in terms of, 
you know, what does that mean for system performance? Thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. You're... Okay, the time for questions is over. If you Thank have you. more questions, please contact the authors directly.